It's been said, if the grass seems greener on the other side, maybe it's time to water your yard. Today, I'll be teaching from the parable of the prodigal son. This son was certain that life would be better if only he could leave home. Later, he discovered all he really wanted out of life could be found at his father's home. Join me for the message entitled, The Way Home. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. This morning, I'd invite you to open up your Bible with me over to Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, and I'm going to share with you a parable that Jesus spoke while he was on the earth. Jesus spoke in parables. Parables are parallels. He would parallel something natural with something spiritual, and his intention was that people would understand these spiritual truths that he was teaching. If you had an ear to hear, if you had an honest heart and you were trying to understand the message of Jesus, it made sense to you. If you really were just skeptical, critical, if you were sitting more in a gallery of judgment towards Jesus, the parables didn't make sense. So it was a way that Jesus was able to qualify the listener. I'm going to put something out there. Those that have ears to hear will get it, and then those that are just critical, they will not grasp what I'm trying to say. So this story is called the parable of the prodigal son. Now, do you realize man put that title on it? It's actually a story of two sons, but more than it's a parable of a son, it's really a parable of a father. The main character in this story is the father, because when you go through and read this story, you're going to see the name father mentioned 12 times. So more than it being about a son or two sons, it's really about the love of a father. Now, let me tell you something about God's love. Number one, God's love is constant. God's love is not up and down, in and out. It's not just hit or miss. God's love is constant. Second thing about God's love, it's very welcoming. Do you understand when God loves you, he doesn't ask you to get cleaned up and then come to me. He accepts us and he embraces us and he receives us. It's a welcoming love. And then God's love is a very patient love. And so God is very patient in that he waited for this son that was a prodigal to come back home. Now, the word prodigal means wasteful. It's a picture of a son who was undisciplined, a son that had a lot of benefits, a son that had a lot of privilege, and he took his inheritance and he went out and just squandered it. Now, the age of this young man we're going to talk about is probably a teenager. He wasn't married, and different commentators will say that it looks, it appears to be that he was a teenager. So he received an inheritance. The law of Moses said that the firstborn would receive double of what the other children would receive. He was the younger, and he received an inheritance. Typically, you would wait till your father passed, but in this case, or passed away through death, but in this case, he said, no, I want my money now. I want to leave town, and I want to get out of here. So if you kind of follow this story, it'll help you if you think about this. It's about a son who, number one, had a relationship with his father, and then it's a story about a son that rebelled against his father, and then it's a story about a son who repented of that rebellion, and then it's a story about a son who got restored back to his father, And then it's a picture of a story of rejoicing that took place as a result of that. So those are kind of the different main portions of this story. Luke chapter 15 and verse number 11, these are the words of Jesus. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided this property, his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had, and he took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. And no one gave him anything. So here you have a Jewish boy who ran away from home. I'm tired of living here. I want to go off to greener pastures. I want life to be better if I'll just get out of here. You know, you can take a cow and you can put that cow in 
80 acres of property. If you have a barbed wire fence around that property, if you drive by that property or you can take a horse, you can drive by there. One thing you'll discover is even though you have 80 acres of green grass, you know what that horse is going to be doing or that cow will be doing? They'll have their head through that barbed wire fence and they'll be reaching out trying to eat the grass on the outside of that property. And there is something about human nature that doesn't want parameters. There's something about human nature that doesn't want to have any type of, uh, it's a sense of lawlessness. We don't want to be under authority. So we need to be under authority. God's commandments they're, they're guardrails. We think of them as a commandment to prohibit us, but they're really commandments that are given to help protect us and to help guard us and keep us in the right way. We have a, a man in our church that's an inspector, and I had lunch with him this week, and we were talking about home inspections and how he travels around inspecting properties. And one of the things he said was, is that, you know, I can't imagine some of the people, there's some counties in Oklahoma, there is no inspection process is that somebody could come and build you a house, and if you didn't know what was going on, they could just throw it together, and you would suffer the consequences of that. Well, think about that. The enforcement of that code is to protect you. We're trying to help you. We're trying to secure your investment. So when God gives us his laws, they are given to help us. They're guidelines and guardrails to keep us is safe in life. And so this young man went out and he's feeding pigs. And he was so hungry, he desired to eat the food that the pigs were eating. And nobody gave him anything in verse 17. And when he came to himself, now this is where he went into the repentance mode. Now the word repent means to change your mind. It's a picture of you change your whole perspective in life. You see things in a different way. So this young man, he changed his mind. When he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? I love that phrase. They have more than enough bread. But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. So in his mind, he thought, this is what I need to do. I need to go back to my father, and I'm going to give him a little speech, and I'm going to tell him that I've sinned, I've done what's wrong, I want to make it right. And then he thought about, what do I need to say here? I don't even want to be uh, your son. Just let me work for you, and my life would be better. And then he said, just treat me as one of your hired servants, verse 20. And he arose and he came to his father. Notice this. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. So here you have the restoration part in that it, you have a father who saw his son a long ways off and he took off running after that son and it's a picture of a father's desire to be reconciled with his son. You need God. I know people say, well, God needs me. He does need you, but you need God. We need a relationship with the Lord. Nobody reaches their fullest potential in life when they shut God out. Whenever they just say, no, 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 I don't want to go that path. I'm going to do my own thing here. See, the Lord hasn't come to ruin your life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. God knows how to make life work. God knows how to make or help you to reach your fullest potential, God-given potential, that is. He has a great plan for you. And so the father took off running. I think what's interesting when you read this is they'll say the custom of that day was it wasn't very dignified for an elderly man to, be, to run. That was the culture of that day. It wasn't something that looked real dignified. Do you understand this father didn't really care about being dignified? When we come to church, our whole focus shouldn't be just to be dignified. Our focus should be to worship the Lord. And so he just took off running after his son. And when he found this son, what did he do? He embraced him. It's a father who was openly affectionate towards his son. I know people think, well, you know, if I'm affectionate towards my son, it might weaken him or it might send the wrong signal. But notice what this father did. And may I add, this father is a picture of the heavenly father. He ran after that boy. He embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. In other words, I've not only sinned against my earthly father, but I've sinned against my heavenly father. 
I've kind of wronged two people here. I've, I've violated God's law and that I didn't honor my parents. And then secondly, I've, I've dishonored you. And he went on, he said, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf. Now, I like this story. Can I tell you why I like this story? This is something I picked up this morning. This is a barbecue for the Lord. Amen. I like to barbecue. But here they have a barbecue. What do they do? They said, let's bring the fattened calf. Let's bring a fattened calf. Now, evidently, they ate a lot of goat. Goat is the number one consumed meat in the world. But on special occasions, they would have this fattened calf. And and this was, you know, a young, tender meat. And they said, hey, let's celebrate. Let's take this fattened calf. Let's kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. So here's the celebration portion. They're celebrating. They're rejoicing. Do you know when people get right with God, there is a celebration that goes on. There's a, an ease. There's a celebration. When people really get their life square with God, there is an inner peace that produces a joy. And then it says here in verse 25, now the older son was in the field and he came and he drew near to the house and he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has, he has received him back safe and sound. Did you know God wants to take every wayward child and bring him home safe and sound? Do you understand he was safe not just physically, but he was safe spiritually? So God is able to take your child that's wayward, your child that's on a self-destructive path, and God is able to touch him. Now, notice the father didn't go out all night, hours of the night looking for the boy. He, you can visit people in prayer. You can go and visit people hundreds of miles away in prayer. Your prayers affect the lives of other people. What your prayers do, they release laborers to go or people that will go and speak to your loved one. And so he wasn't pestering or just wearing the boy out, but he was visiting him in prayer. He was praying over this young man, no doubt, and he looked forward to receiving him back. And so what happened was the boy came back safe and sound. I just have to meditate on that for a moment. Every one of us need to thank God. All of our children are going to be safe and sound. You need to put that in your dialogue where you talk like that. Our kids are safe and our kids are sound. Everybody say, my kids are safe and they're sound. That's what God's plan was. God restored this young man back, and he was safe, and he was sound. He was safe, and he was sound. And so we know that God's able to take your situation, and he's able to watch over your children. Now, I believe some children go home to be with the Lord. Let me tell you, they're safe in the arms of Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me today. God's commandments are given to protect us. Think of them as guardrails. Guardrails are designed to protect people. The prodigal's path of self-indulgence only brought him to a place of personal failure. Remember, no matter how far you've strayed, you can always return home. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.